Hello and welcome. My name is Amy Sayer. I'm the Student Assistance Program Counselor at Shelburne Community School and I'm here today with Rachel Petraska, School Counselor um, for the Middle School at Shelburne Community School and Debbie Haskins who is a training facilitator for the Center for Health and Learning and a licensed drug and alcohol counselor. Um, Debbie does trainings throughout the state on suicide prevention, so I'm so excited to be able to be here today to talk with both of them about this important topic, two people who have a lot of experience in helping families with this important topic. So we're going to start out um, our second session here talking about some data it, to help sort of ground us in what, what we're actually talking about as far as statistics for Vermont and specifically the Champlain Valley School District. Um, we'll, we'll give both uh, middle school and high school information um, so that everybody sort of understands what, what we're talking about as far as statistics in this, in this community. Um, and so one that I'd like to zero in on first here is, um, well actually let me back up for a second and talk about what the Youth Risk Behavior Survey is. Mm -hmm. Rachel, if you wouldn't mind explaining for folks what exactly the Youth Risk Behavior Survey is. Sure. That would be helpful, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so the Youth Risk Behavior Survey has been around for quite a long time, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm not yep. even sure how many years. Um, but it's a survey that we give in Champlain Valley School District, um, schools across the state of Vermont, as well as schools across mm -hmm. the nation. And it's a survey that um, asks students questions. It's really around safety, it's around health, it's around behaviors, around safety and health, and it gives schools oh, some data to be able to uh, focus in on. Areas that we want, that we can then say, oh, these areas of health, we wanna maybe brush up on these in our curriculum, or, um, in our prevention programs. So it's um, you know, great information for schools to have and it lets us know of uh, these really important areas that students may be struggling in mm -hmm. around um, health and wellness. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> and if anyone at home would like to find the full um, YRBS survey, you can do that on the Vermont Department of Health website. We're gonna focus specifically on the areas that focus on suicide prevention today. Um, and one specific that we'll start off with here is um, that Debbie's, in our community, 13% of students report that they felt so sad or hopeless almost every day for two weeks in a row that they stopped doing some of their usual daily activities. Could you talk to us a little bit more about sure. what that means? As Rachel was talking about, the Youth Risk Behavior Survey gathers the data, and it's been around for about 25, 30 years now. And what, it, what really helps us understand, and I was talking to Rachel at the break, is that that's about 100 youth here in this district who are feeling sad or hopeless for more than two weeks. And that's actually a clinical definition. When you stop doing something normal, that's a clinical definition that depression is happening. So each one of those young people are gonna respond differently to that depression or to that sadness, but we need to be aware of it. And as educators and as family members, we're gonna probably see it before anyone else. Mm -hmm. So that's a precursor to the potential of being a risk factor for suicide. Right, and we, we did talk in our first section a little bit about risk factors, but would you mind yep. just real quick, just running through some of those key risk factors so that we should Risk factors to. are anything that um, actually exacerbate a problem. Mm -hmm. So I might be a young person and I might struggle um, with substance abuse, or I might be moving a lot, or I might be socially isolated, or I might have difficulty with anxiety. I might be just struggling with who I am and figuring out you know, what my sexuality is. All of those are risk factors. Mm -hmm. But a warning sign is something more. A warning sign is actually when I start talking about suicide, when I start giving away my possessions, when I start really thinking that I don't, I say things like, I don't wanna be here anymore. Mm -hmm. um, those are all warning signs. That means I'm not only thinking about suicide, I may even have a plan. And so those risk factors, coupled with uh, other things, meaning availability, one of the things that we talk a lot about in suicide prevention is suicide, the actual thought of taking our own life, is a very short window. And parents need to understand that is I may be thinking about it, but not wanting to act on it. But if I am thinking about acting on it, in that time frame, I need to make sure I'm safe. And that really is what our job as a parent is, is to make sure our children are safe, our youth are safe. So I wanna make sure all lethal means are not available. Everything from where the guns are locked, to knives, 
to all kinds of avenues. I also want to think if, the, if my young person is a teenager and they're driving, that they don't have access to a car maybe during that time. Mm -hmm. So we know that lethal means matters because we can actually make an intervention and make a difference. So I'm thinking that I'm feeling very sad, but I don't have any way to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. The other two things I just want to mention about um, risk factors is a concussion can be a risk factor mm -hmm. because it actually impacts the way the brain works. So if my young person has had a sports injury or fallen from a skateboard or skiing, I need to know that that can last for a year. Mm -hmm. We know that other medications can actually impact and be a risk factor. And we know, of course, you've heard me mention several times, substance abuse not only alcohol, but marijuana is the um, extreme potency that marijuana is being here in Vermont that's being offered and used by youth is causing psychosis and exacerbating illnesses, mental illnesses, mm -hmm. such as depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So if I've got a young person with some risk factors who's also got some of these other physical risk factors, it's a warning sign. Right. And I really right. need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And Rachel and I, in our Skills for Life classes um, with our middle level students at Shelburne Community School, we talk a lot about and have this year talked a lot with them about so social isolation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you might want to mention the yeah. curriculum that we were working Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah, so to start our year, we started with a curriculum that we haven't used before. It's called Start With Hello. And mm -hmm. it's a curriculum that is put out um, by the Sandy Hook Co Coalition. And it is really all about social isolation. Mm -hmm. And we know that is also a risk factor um, for, um, for suicide. And um, it was incredibly well received. We liked about the program, this curriculum, it was there was an elementary component, a middle school component, and there's also a high school component as well. Um, and the response that we got from students was um, incredibly positive because we've all felt isolated at times. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's fleeting, but for some kids it's not. Mm -hmm. And for some youth, it's, it's more significant. And um, our students know who some of those youth are, and we do too, but not mm -hmm. always. Um, and it, it, I think it allowed them to be able to really reflect on their own feelings of social isolation, but also how can I help others? And mm -hmm. if I'm concerned about somebody, even if they're not my friend, what can I do about mm -hmm. it? Oh, I can talk to my trusted adult. Yeah. I've got to reach out. It's all of our responsibility to take care of each other. We're all in this together. That was you know, basically the message of the curriculum. Um, and it really seemed like it flowed really nicely right into mm -hmm. suicide prevention. Because we know that belonging is huge. Mm -hmm. If kids don't feel belonging, mm -hmm. and as you're talking, Rachel, that's absolutely one of the core components of mm -hmm. And what we know now when suicides happen is we often hear how isolated they were, whether it was in their room or within their family, and had people come together and talked about that, they might have seen it mm -hmm. as a collective group. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right. We all have a piece to this yeah. that we need to really focus in on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that we need to pay attention to the feelings that these kids are having mm -hmm. and not yep. sort of fluff them off onto the side as being dramatic or something like mm -hmm. that. If there's attention-seeking behavior in any way, we need to pay attention to it and recognize that um, that they're hurting and struggling yeah. and, and be able to help them as best that we can. I, I like to say to parents if, you know, they'll, parents will say to me, well, oh, are they just seeking attention? Yes, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. give it to them. Right. Um, and give it to them positively. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be consistent. And I know that schools have policies in place for that very reason, is that every time you either talk about hurting yourself or harming yourself or someone else, we're gonna pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Because something's going on and they don't know how to cope with it. Right. And this is really about coping. You know, I'm showing this behavior because I don't know how to cope. Mm -hmm. Debbie, could you talk a little bit about depression, just in the, t the sense of, you know, for some, uh, every once in a while we'll get, Amy and I will get a question around depression. Well, is my child really depressed? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, do I, do I take that seriously? I think you always take change seriously, and it could be, depression shows up in many different ways. Males tend to be angry sometimes and actually project it outwards, and, and females sometimes take it inwardly. Sometimes they're not eating, sometimes they may be cutting. There's lots of different um, coping skills that people use when they're feeling sad. So my first line is always, you need to get your youth to a doctor. Mm -hmm. You need to let them have that discussion with them because it may be 
clinical and it may be chemical mm -hmm. and there may be something going on more than so let's get it checked out and I was thinking about this on the way over is you know I don't take care of my car myself I actually you know know how to check the oil and do some things but I go to experts when I want an expert opinion mm -hmm. and I think sometimes as parents we think that that's not okay mm -hmm. and I really think that getting someone to the doctor because a doctor can shut the door and have a conversation with your youth that you might not have and they might send you out the room sure. but that's okay mm -hmm. um so we need to flush out whether it is true sadness sadness over an event or something mm -hmm. chemical mm -hmm. yeah thanks for explaining that because i think that's really yeah. helpful it is hard it yeah is it's hard. Hard, hard for parents and thank you both so much for this time together today we are going to be um having two more conversations about this important topic. So I hope that folks will tune in and get as much information from these two professionals as possible because as much information as we can get about this topic, the better. So thank you all so much and um, please feel free to reach out to any of your school counselors should you have any further questions or just want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about this as well. Thank you.